Hello, good evening, everyone, anyone that's listening out there. I hope everyone's getting me. I am just going to go to my own Facebook page to make sure this goes public. So if there's anyone out there with me, just bear with me a second. If there's anyone out there with me, just uh, send a hello, and then I know I've got company. Hello, Roy. Yeah, Roy is there. Yes, okay, we're here. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm broadcasting here from in the Old King's Head, as you might guess. I thought I'd uh, set up a camera system here. You've got the view behind me looking out on the street and the inner side of the upper bar where we have numerous little bits of interesting things going on. Hello, Sheena. Um, a little bit later than I expected because when I got here, Harry had recorded some unusual sounds. Good evening, Roy. Um, up in room five. So we've been reviewing those and I went uh, up in the room to try and recreate the sound. And it appears as though it might have been the handle on the shower rattling because it's quite loose and it's easy to move and rattle and it's not something that goes on its own even on a windy night it doesn't normally blow and rattle so although it's not anything that we can jump up and down again it's one of these things where we keep a note of um i'm just telling you this because harry gets very excited when when these things happen and uh, i just love to try and follow up and see if there's anything we can either account uh, that makes the noise or not and whilst I was in the room communicating with Harry via phone there was even a thump recorded on the internal CCTV system that I didn't hear in real time that the mics picked it up and we found that on playback which is something to be reckoned with for the future as well something of interest so I haven't got any special guests to come in to give any talks tonight um, what I was going to do is throw out a question. Um, what are we looking for as paranormal investigators? What drives us to do this? Uh, I've got uh, Holly and Mandy at home. I'm just going to bring them into studio with us. And if I bring that like that, find the right picture. There we go. Hi, guys. We're live. Hi. Hello. Good evening. I was just I was just telling everyone about uh, having to do a, a little bit of research when I first turned up as uh, Harry had noticed yeah. uh, noises in the bathroom. Also, what I forgot to tell you before was as I was actually talking to Harry via phone, I was in room five, that the, the internal CCTV picked up a thump from the floor or the side of the bed that I didn't hear in real time and it was picked oh, up on the camera system. And that's, that's, quite, it, that's yeah. very interesting because I didn't hear it at the time. And yet the camera mm. system, the microphones on the cameras did pick it up. Cool. Interesting things to note, the strange world that goes on around here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's been, um, it's been great since all the CCT footage has been in. Yeah. Yes. It's picked up lots of things that you wouldn't see normally, yes. you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, at night and that when nobody's there. Really well, cool. the, the the incident I put out on my Facebook feed recently, the, the gas bottle falling over in the cellar. Yeah. yeah. Um, interesting. Very interesting. Well, it's picked that up, whereas if there was nothing down, no footage down there, we would never no. have known. Yeah. No. Um, you know, no. what's going on. So it's really good. I suspect there'll be more to come. And, um, it'll, you know, anything unusual will get picked up and recorded. There are that many cameras around the building now. Yeah. Um, he, he has to warn the staff, of course, because the pub's going to be reopening downstairs from tomorrow. So mm -hmm. he has to warn the staff and tell them that the camera's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, is it? <laughs> and Sheena's saying hello to you two as well. Hi, Hi Sheena. Sheena. <laughs> Very good. So, Ma Mandy and Holly, this is a question I'm throwing at you now. No. I, I'll chip in with my little bit in, in a little while, but... As paranormal investigators, what are we actually looking for? What do you want to try and find or seek in investigations? Evidence of the paranormal. paranormal yeah, definitely. That simple. Yeah. But, but what would satisfy you? Uh, I'd love to see an apparition. Um, and also, I like to be like pulled or poked or touched, when you know, which has happened to me at the King's Head when we've been behind the bar. 
and something's grabbed the back of my sh my top and pulled pulled it and there's yeah. been nothing behind me and I, I get so excited because <laughs> I'm like oh wow you know you know it's really cool I, I like that I, I want like the evidence as well obviously mm -hmm. uh, captured uh, which is good because if that uh, the CCT footage had have been in when that happened we probably would have actually caught it on camera yeah you know yeah, yeah I'd it, love to see like a full bodied actual like ghost spirit. Yes. Yeah, it, it's that sort of thing, and the CCTV system will help with that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's 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 what we're looking for. But when you when you come out on investigations, yeah, um, what sort of things do you rule out before you rule something in? What what? I mean, by what I'm saying is, what do you determine as something being for real or not? Uh, well, when we hear voices, sometimes depending on the night, you have to take into an account that it's like in the middle of the city. There's yes. probably loads of drunk people around, you know. You do get that. Yeah. So you have to be mindful that not every like voice you hear is going to be a spirit it's gonna probably be someone outside yeah it's a fair point especially here because as you say there's so much noise from comes in from the outside yeah. i mean you have to debunk things so if we're sort of in one say in the function room and we're hearing footsteps upstairs yeah we've got to go up and investigate just to make sure it's uh nobody yeah, walking nobody around or, or... you know so you have, you have to just be careful you know you've got to always try and recreate mm -hmm. you know the noise or what it could be you mm -hmm. know um to just make sure and rule it out really and like let's say a door slam short you need to take into account like is it a windy night yes oh yeah very much very much so because some yeah. of the windows um can rattle and move around quite a bit in here yeah. as well yeah um i know i know from personal experience i've been down in the bar um and i, I there was a little window open and uh, it took me a while to figure out that that was every so often the wind would catch that and make it move but I had to do a, a bit of walk around the investigation because at first I thought somebody was tapping out a message to me, but it wasn't. Well, we remember that time we were um, behind the bar and there was a couple that had come from downstairs to join yeah. us. Yeah. And we were behind the bar and the door opened. Yes. Um, and to be honest, we, we sort of put it down that there could have been a draft, but there wasn't. I know there wasn't a draft. And we did actually shut the door again. And then a bit later on, it happened again. And there was no no draft because it's right. not really drafty up there. No. So, you know, we, we were trying to debunk it, weren't we? But we yeah. were, weren't sort of so admitting that it was paranormal. But I don't know. You, you sort of start thinking to yourself, yeah, it's got to be because there was it was quite a heavy door as well so for a wind to blow it open um Whoops. So, sorry no it's fine yeah, kind of. you know to, for the wind to blow it open yeah you know it's uh there's no big draft at all being blown through yeah um what i what i'm always aware of in this building and it, it will have all changed now because previously there's been guests staying in the rooms yeah uh that there won't be anybody staying in the guest rooms anymore so we used to get a lot of movement that we could hear upstairs and we used to have to rule, rule it out completely because there was the possibility of it people moving around yeah mm. i mean we, we had a good um you know in room five the other day i mean we got a woman's voice and we captured that didn't we it was very faint but we did capture yeah. it on the cct that's TV. right um and that room just lately has been really really active and you know, there's been some strange things going on. It's the most active flight room there now, I'd say. Yeah. At the moment, I mean, poor Harry, you know, it got to him, didn't it? It affected him quite bad. He's never, he said he's never been affected like that before. 
So uh, yeah, yeah, that was strange. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all well, says so all the time he's been there, he's never been affected like he was. So obviously <laughs> something quite, I wouldn't say sinister, but dark. I think was in that yeah. room that, that night. Right, like, not necessarily something that's not of this earth. Maybe just someone like who wasn't a nice person in life. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, um, interesting days to come. I can t I can see with all the changes that's coming coming along. Yeah, Let me just take that off again. Sorry. Is I'll that the film yeah, I'll bring that back in in a minute. I was I, I was just doing that in the background to bring that in, and that that's one of my uh, things I just wanted to show. I know we've got um, Roy and Sheena in the chat room there, and um, it. I'll first ask Roy. What 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 is it you set out to seek to find within the paranormal? Because you've been doing this a long, long time, just as, you, as Sheena has, as well as myself. Um, I've got my own reasons why I, I do this all paranormal stuff. But um, Roy, if you're still there, what what do you look for? What drives you on with this? And Sheena, the same question. Um, my particular take on it all is, as most people know, is developing technology. Yeah. And then following through and using that technology, and when it is, and it doesn't happen all the time, but when you get a result, either a photo or a, an audio recording or something like that, that's attributed to technology rather than a sensitive person, then that gets me excited, um, and I continue to try strive to go forwards with this. Yeah, it's like what you machines that. Um you know, they can pick up like voices that you know, we, we sort of get it in the background. We sometimes can't quite make out what it's saying, but sometimes we do actually hear things, don't we? Yes. Oh, Roy's... Like the, uh, sorry, Paul. No, I gone. like the new box you've got. Yes, yes. That's very, very good. I'll t remind me to talk about that in a moment. Yeah, that's yeah. quite interesting. Um, Roy, Roy's come back to me. He said, can the paranormal be replicated and observed? which is a very good point and again I'll, i i would say that using technology it allows you to take machinery and set things up in the same or varying locations and take the same technology so that is something to record or take photos or video and as you say roy to replicate experiments i guess and see if you can get any similar results in in different places different times is uh, roy the fella that uh, he came not... machine. He came yeah, machine. Yeah, yes, that, yes, yeah. yes. He's yeah. been. Uh, he's been. He's Sorry. been researching for a, quite a number of years. Yeah. See what what what's good about your stuff, Paul, is you make it from scratch and it's really unique. Nobody else has got mm -hmm. one or yes. anything. It's not like these boxes you get on the paranormal radio waves. The radio waves and all that. Well, I'll I'll, I'll talk about that. The new box. Um, I've called it the Paravox. And it um, follows on from uh, geo portal type devices. And technically inside, they are channel skipping radios. So there is another little bit of technology in with them as well. But they basically scan through radio frequencies. And whenever they, uh, the device, in, the electronics inside pick up a voice, it will stop and replicate that voice and, and transmit it out, which you can then hear in real time. The difficulty I have is that whatever is spoken or replicated by the machine is actually from a living person somewhere in the broadcast studio. Mm -hmm. So that's where I have difficulty with that kind of technology. What they have introduced with them is a reverb chip from basically from a karaoke machine. So it adds that depth to your voice or when you're singing, just yeah. as a special effect. And at first I built my Parabox as a... Um, as an experiment, and I didn't really take it that seriously. I just wanted to replicate the technology. But it's quite interesting uh, when you use it live in real time. I've had I've put a couple more controls on it, so there's a, there's a little bit of variety and variable. And uh, I've got one more little trick to add to it yet. It, mine, instead of skipping through radio frequencies, it has a live microphone. So. Any uh, any audio that comes through that machine is very close to it. It's in the room with us, basically. It's not a radio receiver. And the last little bit I want to add to that 
is a white noise generator. So that will combine uh, yeah. audio, audio from the mic and white noise as well, but through the special kind of white noise that I generate. So that's the way that will go. But yeah, it's it's unexpectedly become interesting to me that I didn't really expect it to to do an awful lot. It has, you know, picked a couple of things. Yeah, up, it's really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, and and uh, yes, I think Sheena would um, find that one interesting. Wait, uh, is I it know... a para box or vox? Vox, V O X, para vox. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, because paranormal and vox for vocals, so para, para box. Nice. Um, Roy says he's been researching for at least 25 years. Wow. Sheen has been researching for 43 years. I didn't know that, Sheena. That is a long time. And yes, Sheena, we will most definitely get and work together with the para box. It's. Um, there's similarities to the white noise that I've heard you using as well. Um, so there is close replication with that. And in fact, I could sit a microphone very close to your white noise generator and that churn that out through the Paravox as well. Uh, yes, I. no, I'm not going to repeat what you just said, Sheena. I, I just watched <laughs> what you just put. <laughs> I just, just want to save face for it, that's all. Um, so yes, I, I, I love the, the, the possibility of what that can do and it's totally experimental. As I say, with all the technology I do, everything <laughs> everything is uh, an experiment, but sometimes these experiments manage to replicate something of interest. Mm. So hopeful. And there is another technology I, I spoke to Sheena about as well is, is applying um, bat detector type technology to live audio as well. So that would break down much higher frequencies into a lower frequency. Yeah. And I've got circuitry built and working for that. I just need to find the right box to put that in so as I can carry it around safely and use it. So that will be something that will be coming out with us very, very soon. Yeah. Yes. Um, so if anyone else is out there that wants to give us any idea of um, what they look for when they do investigations, uh, I know we're all looking for similar things. Yeah, there's not many at the moment, but hmm. hopefully, mind you, you did you didn't uh, let you us. Did, I didn't. I didn't know. This is quite. This is quite impromptu. <laughs> this is quite impromptu. I, I, I was. I was. I wasn't I was quite sure. Share how it, but... Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, she just put to try variable sound waves with the Paradox. Yes, very good idea, yes. There is an awful lot that can be done with that. It's quite new to me, the whole idea of the technology. So there's a lot of experiment can go on with that. And of course, as we all know, when we're in a room and do call outs and we ask if the spirits can contact us in various different ways, um, this just, just adds another potential, another possibility. Yeah. Um, I, I just clicked on a picture. I'll bring it back in now because I'm sitting in the throne room in the King's Head. And that picture that's up now is actually from the thermal camera. I can't get it to go full screen, but that's the thermal camera. And if I wave my arm about, that's me sitting at the end of the table. I think that's coming. Oh, it's frozen. Yeah, it's frozen, Paul. We Has can't... it frozen? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll take it off and um, see if we see if I can reenact it in a minute. But anyway, in in this room and room six, um, we've got thermal cameras, and so they show various heat levels. And um, I'm just going to have a quick look. So just bear with me. I just want to see if I can make it uh, run again. So bear with me. It's back on think so i'm gonna see if i can bring it back in now i think what it's what it's doing is it's freezing as soon as i try and bring it into yeah. the stream it looks like it freezes yeah. so uh that one isn't gonna work another well, day maybe i got the thermal images as well yeah. aren't they? Yes. So you've got one in room six, haven't you? And one down here in the throne room. Yeah. You can um, tell when there's, uh, what I like about it is you can tell when there's temperature anomalies and we've never really looked at that before, have we? No, 
No. It's always been sound and yeah. So, photos as things like that yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah because uh, as we know quite often people have talked about coal spots being some sort of representation of a spirit being near and um that will give us a different take on it all yeah um so, but I, so, I had sorry go on sorry no on. i was gonna say so thermal imager will show up if there's like a spirit or something it will pick it up as a cold spot it yes. won't pick it up as heat, like mm. us. If we're if we're walking around, it picks us up. In, Isn't as it white? Heat. Oh, it, do, it does go through. It does go through a large temperature change, and it's yeah. very variably gray, uh, gradient on the image. Uh, the red and white are the hotter colours, and it goes down to blue and purple. I think for the darker temperatures. Yeah. Does it pick up the actual temperature change in in the room, or are, are we? you're going to do that are you going to have like a thermometer in a big thermometer in the room? yeah we, we um it's something we haven't got to yet i have got um a portable thermometer um just put a bit more light on um and the thermal imager does record temperature in real yeah. time as well so if there was um a triggered recorded event the that data would be recorded with it as the um to give some indication anyway obviously the, oh, sorry. the imagery is probably the more critical thing to notice whatever shape um, yeah. anything cha uh, takes but uh, temperature obviously is interesting very interesting paul in sorry to put him up in the camera um it's like reflecting and it kind of looks like there's some a ghostly ball next to you yeah that's <laughs> that's been there since i turned it on the, um it's uh it's what like it is reflecting. what it is that the little white spot above my head there mm -hmm. is one of the other cameras there's two cameras in this room and it's in infrared mode at the moment so i think it's a beam of infrared light and the webcam that i'm broadcasting on can't see infrared in the same way it can just about pick it up but not in the same way as a night vision camera so i think it's a, a beam of infrared light that's what yeah, going is. back to the temperature, uh, yes. room five uh, seemed to have really cold spots and every time that happened, we seemed to hear a woman's voice, it, Yeah, uh, you know, like, yeah, a woman's voice and then also Harry felt ill, didn't he? It's like yeah. as soon as one piece of activity happens, another one follows. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is the, this is a point as well of correlating these things together and see if there's a connection between them all. And I, I, once again, a beauty of the camera system is it records. So if we all speak out and tell, just speak out and say what we're feeling at the time, it's not yeah. forgotten. It's recorded. Did Sheena uh, see the video footage of the spirit we caught behind the bar just after they'd gone? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't broadcast that because what I wanted to do was actually just narrow the clip down rather than broadcast yeah. um, a five-minute clip. I just wanted right. to narrow it yeah. down um, rather than put a big clip on. So I just must get around to editing that to a smaller clip. Admit, admittedly, though, that with the pub being short, um, it's quite active at the moment yeah. in, in mm. different rooms. But I wonder whether it will get better when it opens you know because there's going to be more people downstairs not and, just yeah. that people like from all over the world like tourists yeah. well, yes. maybe not the world but the uk you yes. know so you're going to have different people so hopefully that will build up the energy more you know well one one of the things that could be attributing it to change now is of course uh, the pub is in startup mode and they've had to recruit staff and go through training process. Mm. The chef's been in the kitchen for the last three days, deep cleaning everything to restart again. So it has become an, a hive of activity. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure where Harry is at the moment. I think he was um, I think he was down in the bar, tidying up and cleaning up, ready for reopening. So yeah. he's become very, very busy. Yeah. Very focused. But th yeah, there's a lot of changes a lot more energy being brought in so i suspect i would hope things will get more interesting as the 
coming weeks start happening. And then, of course, once we run up to June and more people are allowed to move about freely, hopefully nothing else will stop them, no more lockdowns. Yeah. Then, yes, it, uh, it will get a bit more interesting again. Certainly be on the lookout for uh, more nighttime recorded events to see if anything happens overnight. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see as well now uh, the rooms are all shut up. When they had people stopping in there, mm. uh, obviously, I don't know whether any of the people sort of said to Harry if anything had happened, mm. but now all the rooms are empty. We're going to be able to video it all and capture yes. anything that goes on in there now. Yeah. Which is over, be- over the years, um, guests that have stayed have left lots of messages of things that have happened to them yeah. and over the years as i've done events involving involving the public some of them that were staying here in the building they would quite often recount their feelings and thoughts um that had happened to them while they stayed here and mul- sometimes that like, multiple guests they would come back again and again and again so yeah there's there was quite a few stories you know. yeah It'd be nice to actually get all the stories from I know, people, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. You know, and what they've experienced as well. Maybe Harry should put it up on the Facebook page. Like, yes, yeah. I'm, I, I have got no doubt you will, re- you will remind him, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, there was actually a book of um, letters that people written in. So right. uh, some of it has de- most definitely been recorded. Uh, Danny's joining us. Hi, Danny. How are you doing? Um, so yes, it, it has come come to light over the years. People have left messages. Yeah. Yes. So, Danny, and I'm just saying we're just yeah. doing an informal chat. Really, I didn't uh, promote and advertise this. It's a bit off the cuff, um, so it's just more or less a bit of a chat. But um, the key question I asked at the start, I'm just saying this again for Danny, is as paranormal investigators what do we as individuals what do we look for what do we seek in uh, doing investigations because one of the things i wanted to relate to is obviously all of us have been to plaz tech a lot over the years and um way back in the early days there was large groups that used to go there and some of them were thrill seekers let's say i'm being polite about it yeah. and uh, <laughs> i just wanted to come along for a scare and I have known it where people have stood in the bathrooms in Plaza to have farting contests. Just, you know, they weren't particularly interested in paranormal. It was just... Charming. Yeah, I know. I thought so. I thought, why have you paid all this money to come here and do that? I know, it's a waste of money and it spoils it for other people as well. Yeah, yeah. It's the likes of all of us uh, involved in this. It's a serious thing. It's a serious thing. We're very interested in it all. I'll just go back, Sheila. the The incident was, um, I think it was the night you came, and it was after you left. And there was a camera that was pointing towards a kitchen door at a distance, and there appeared to be a shadow figure that reached out. This is the best of my description. Reached out towards the door, um, the kitchen fingers. door. Long fingers. Yes. Yeah. So we want to actually recreate it in the darkness, in complete darkness. It's nowhere near dark enough at the moment um, because looking back at the footage, we know the kitchen light was on and the other side light by the door wasn't on. So we want to recreate the conditions and see what the cam- cameras um, pick up during recreation before we jump to any massive conclusions. It's one of these things where I quite often um, say that Things are an experiment and we must log them and record them and note them. And if things happen similarly in similar places, then it starts to get more interesting, the more events we can record. And obviously the CCTV system will help with that. But uh, visitors coming into the building as well, I think will make a big change as well. You know, in other investigators coming in and bringing their uh, own energies and thoughts, that will uh, possibly change things just to say paul if you see me looking down it's because i'm sharing the sound okay very good (laughs) good. (laughs) i wish i could but i'm too busy looking after this so uh, i can't at the moment (laughs) but uh, i'm uh, when when this uh, gets recorded it can uh, get shared out that way as well share it out sideways that way 
yeah. Yeah. I just wonder if my friend in New Zealand, Paul Hopkins, if he's out there listening at the moment, he sometimes pops in and says hello. Oh, does he? Yes. Incidentally, funny enough, I asked, I asked uh, Paul, I, I worked with him for a short time at Tesco's, and when he was allowed, we both finished about the same time at Tesco's, through our own choice, and uh, he went back to New Zealand, he, he'd got a house out there. His partner, who he's not with now, but they still remain friends, um, had visited Plazteg. She had been there a couple of times. Yeah, right, she yeah. was a sensitive, a medium, a reader, and she lots of different stories i had met her a long time ago um but lots and lots of things i would love to uh, chat with her again and i asked paul about uh new zealand i said that she had any experiences in new zealand and his answer was extremely strange he come back and said no he says from her uh reckoning new zealand is very very flat there is very little spiritual ghostly paranormal activity in suppose, new zealand suppose so over here there's lots of history everywhere yes. Yes. you know you've got the black right, and white buildings romans yes. oh yes. you've got everything and yeah you know the, like plus tech there's a lot of history there of you know judge jeffries and you know everything you know it's uh so i think this is what makes these places good you know Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, you're quite right. I think Western civilization has only been in New Zealand for a, a fairly short time. So, yeah, we've got a uh, different kind of history, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Dan, Danny's come back to the question about what we're looking for. And he says, to find out the truth, to be honest. And Steve um, quite often says the same thing. He, yeah. In call outs, he yeah. said, we're just, just looking for the truth, which yeah. is, is very interesting. Um, because the, the, I suppose there, there are people that are looking to get in contact with loved ones, lost ones, mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, and but yeah, we're we, we, the truth? <laughs> Sorry, say again. The question is, what is the truth? Well, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's a good point. See, yeah. I've had my own personal experiences that were not related to technology as such but just personal experiences and they're, they're not recordable events, but I've had many, many yeah. over the years. So to me, there are still questions to be answered. Um, um, yeah, re reaching out to find out a little bit more each time, I suppose. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know, the more you investigate yes. look into things, yes. you know, I mean, you know, going back to the spirit boards, as I yeah. say, there's like things we've got to sort of, um, you know uh experiment with yeah. see, as we were talking about you yeah. know doing a, a live and seeing if people uh that are watching we can get f things through for them yeah, yeah. Uh, to just see that we don't need actually the person uh that communicates with a spirit to be on the board or in the room Yes. So whether it'll prove that the person needs to be in the room or on the board, you know, it's uh, it's something like we've got to experiment with, really. Yeah. Well, that, yes, that is that's one of the um, events we want to do in in the yeah. near future, as you say, is to to do a broadcast like this and invite people to participate. Um, we just need to work out um, strategy of how we're going to do it. From my point of view, from cameras and placements and things, yeah. and. Um, just work out something it'll be very interesting and as you said mandy to be quite fair it might nothing might happen because it might need somebody to be in the room asking the questions at the time but yeah. it's still a great still a great experiment to do oh yeah I, yeah I can't wait to do it try it can't we yes jack's joined us hi jack hope you're feeling better um hello jack yeah she's there <laughs> i think nan's watching by the way oh, man. <laughs> Hi, Nan. <laughs> um, Sheena says, would like to do an experiment with Holly and Mandy regarding this. Is that, um, do you mean, Sheena, sort of live broadcast communication type things with people in different areas? Is that what you mean? That's what we're trying to aim at as well. Yeah. Um, and it, it really, it's streaming software like this that really will allow this to happen. Up until recently, I wouldn't never have even thought it was possible, but... Uh, this broadcasting stuff has become very interesting to be able to do these real-time yeah. events. I mean, as I said, Paul, I'm a bit of a, 
I'm a paranormal investigator and I love everything about it, but I'm a bit of a scaredy cat still. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, if, if people want to send me live around the place on my own one night, I'll I'll do it, you know, just uh, to see how brave I can be, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I can do it as well on my own, though. Yeah. What, it's sitting in rooms, you mean? Doing yeah. Doing you know, visuals. Yeah. yeah, if somebody, like, yeah. says to me, go to the cellar, yes. well, I won't want to, but I will yeah. do it yeah. because I'll be on live, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I still uh, want to either use you, yes, or Harry on a live one day, right? And trying to puppet you around, <laughs> please. Now you got me scared. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing scares you, Paul. Is there anything actually? I'm going to ask you that question. Has anything ever, ever really scared you? Because I know you're not a person that gets scared easy. <laughs> no, that, my first answer is, and will always be, no. Nothing has happened in the past that scared me. I've had lots of interest, lots of interesting things that has really perked my curiosity. Mm. Um, the one thing that was a challenge to myself in the early days of visiting Plaz Tech, probably only about the second visit I ever did there. And as we know, it's quite a, a dark and daunting sort of building on the top yeah. floor. Then. And I got quite a large Columbus piece of technology and I've been using it to monitor the room and nothing in particular had happened. It was early days and it come to break town and everybody left and was going down, went downstairs, leaving me to de-rig this thing because I was going to take it down or move it to yeah. another location. So all right, okay. And as I'm taking this thing apart to, to carry it and transport it, I started hearing footsteps along the top corridor outside the room. I think I was in, it was either the panel room or the yeah. regency room. And I had genuinely heard footsteps on the landing outside, which stopped me from taking this thing apart. And I, at the, remind, the time, I distinctly remember thinking, right, am I going to bury my head in the sand and try and ignore it? Or am I going to pop my head out through the door and have a look? Bravery got the better of me, and I put my head out the door to have a look. Mm. And who was it? Marwood. Oh, the cat. <laughs> the cat. Really? <laughs> Tiptoeing along the corridor. Yeah. So ever since then, that was my first challenge to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, that yeah. Last tag. Yeah, I've got to challenge myself in a way because I'm all right if I've got somebody with me. Yeah. So, you know, like I was at Plus Tech once and we were on in the uh, Great Chamber. Yeah. And we were with that that lady medium. She's really good. Um, yeah, Liz. Liz. And uh, we were talking and was, Kev was with us and we heard footsteps, as you said, above running around. So me and Kev actually went up to have a look. Now, I was okay because Kev went with me. But I wouldn't have gone on my own. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so I've got to challenge myself a little bit further each time now, I think. And, and that's for every individual person to do that for yeah. themselves. It's no use being forced into it. You've got to want to do it for yourself. Um, and after that incident at Plasteg, I've walked around Plasteg on my own with just Cornelia in the building. I've wandered yeah. around all the rooms and with even with groups of people there or without. So, yes, I do it just i've done it as a challenge so i yes. did have a challenge there once because we stayed over one night yes and it was like six o'clock in the morning and we were up on the top floor and i needed to go to the loo which is on the very bottom floor so i had <laughs> to go through the building all on my own but to get yes. downstairs um yeah. i was so scared yeah. but i did it yeah so i was quite proud of myself um, Sheena's come back and said, uh, yes, she would like to be involved with the experiment with the two of you with the Ouija board. So we'll yeah, have to get, yeah. we'll have to get heads together and yeah. work out something. Um, I, I only mean we did, we need to work out a procedure of what we're all going to do and where we're going to do it and things like yeah. that. But then we want people from outside the building, outside the room out there in stream yard line uh, land yeah. to come in and ask the questions. Um, that we won't know what the questions are or oh, what the answers yeah. could be. So yeah. that it is an interesting experiment. So yes, yeah. thank you, Sheena. Yes, most definitely. 
Um, Danny has come back and said, uh, I've seen and experienced some really crazy stuff at Plasteg over the last 10 years. I spent there just... I just love the place. Yeah, it does have that hold on you. It is, um, it was, yeah. doesn't it? It's our favourite. <laughs> it's amazing. Obviously, the king heads first, but uh, you know, plus tech. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have equal love for both buildings. Yeah, I've been I to do both as well. Yeah. So many times, but yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, I love them. Yeah, I love them. I was just thinking about whether um, if enough people. Oh, Mal's just come into the stream. Hi, Mal. Hi. Um, if enough people come forward, but I'll, I'll need some people if they want to come along and, and speak on camera online, is to tell us about their most interesting paranormal experiences. Yeah. Um, just to do that as a as a broadcast. That would be good. Yeah. So um, we'll 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 see how that goes as a future as a future one. And I know Steve's bigging in, braving himself up. He's going to do a, a, a live one night as well. That would so, be good. Uh, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for him to come forward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you rubbing your hands for? <laughs> are you going to gr grill him over something? Yeah. <laughs> right. Once you do it, though, it's it's all right. You, you sort of... Yeah. You're not as worried once you've done a first live. You know, it's no, not as bad. No, no, no. no, I mean, you know, I'm sure there's there's probably only about 10 million people watching us, so there's not that many really tonight. You know, nothing uh, to worry about. <laughs> I, I, yeah, not not many tonight. No. Yeah. <laughs> Danny's come back and says, "I'll chat about Plaz Tag if you've got a few days to spare." <laughs> so, um, yeah, I can see there be be some um, material that could uh, people could come forward with. Be interesting. But uh, any anyone that um, has uh, that I've been in contact with, that's a friend of mine, anyone who wants to come along and tell us their side, anything that's significant that's happened to them over the years. Um, message me, inbox me, let me know, and we'll we'll put it all together for a, for a chat one night and online chat. You could chat. Uh, get a person, like this is just an idea, a person like each different that's been to a certain venue and yes. knows a lot about a certain venue and they can talk about that right what in the similar way that we've been to the, to this place a lot you mean yeah yeah okay yeah yeah that's what i'm looking for because i'm interested in how people interpret or how they're able to get over the message of um being in a haunted location and something happening to them and how did they feel and yeah. what did they sense or see what 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 defines a, a paranormal experience for people See what, because, what I, I'm quite um, uh, well delighted with really is since Holly's been going to the King's Head, she's started now the last say two or three times that she's been to to sense things and see things as what's happened yeah, in the past. Very yeah. sensitive. Yeah, though. and she never used to be. And as you said, maybe the longer you're going to a certain place mm. and you start attaching yourself to the place a bit more um this this feeling of sensing things and seeing things of what happened uh and picking up names and exactly what they happened to them um you know uh it's quite amazing really so you know i'm quite don't know whether she's pleased but i'm pleased she's starting to do that <laughs> i i've always had this belief and this was something that um it came across to me, if you do hear a little bit of noise in the background, Harry's potting around, by the way. No, actually, uh, <laughs> Hi, Harry. <laughs> yeah. I think he's just oh, walking. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Who was that behind me? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Harry. That's, Hi. That's, a, that's a scary man. Can you see him? <laughs> just yeah. about. Or is it a shadow yeah, figure? He does look quite scary because he's in dark. He's in dark. He's in dark. He's in dark. He's he's in dark. I know. I know. Hang on. If I, I'll just light him up. How's that? Now you can see it. Oh, yeah. I, I can't take the earphones out. Okay, so I'll get feedback. Yeah. yeah so, so, what I was saying is that the, the longer Holly's been at the King's Head, the more sensitive she's getting to things. Yes. Yes. Picking things up, which is really good. Yeah. yeah. I've never had that anywhere else. Sorry. But... Logging on my phone or? I'll, I'll send you a link. 
Sorry, I'm just going to um, send Harry a link so he can come in on the stream. Oh, brilliant. Oh, so nice. You, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Keep, talk, keep talking for a minute. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, I said, I've, I've, I've never had that anywhere else. Not plus tag nowhere. But ever since I've been, like, going to the king's head more and more, I feel like... I have a bit of a window that I can look in on the history of it. Oh, okay. You sort of bring in yeah. like names up and actually yeah. what you feel you get the feeling of what's happened. Like you felt as if you were being choked. Yeah. And the way I explain it, I feel like there's a tunnel straight from my head to the king's head. Oh, right, okay. Mm. So you're you're connecting to it in some way then? Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Uh, okay. All right. But when when did you do you, when do you think you sense the change of that then? Have you felt a change? Yeah. Um it was the time Sheena was with us as well. Um, that's when it started properly. I wonder whether there was some connection there because Sheena's a medium, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, Sheena might come, might come back with that then. Um, yeah. Maybe oh, yeah. she sort of opened a window or something. Yeah. For Holly, in a way, I, I don't know. Interesting thought. I'm sure Sheena will come back with an answer to to that. <laughs> um, we may get Harry coming on the stream. I think I've just sent him a link, so we may get Harry uh, coming on the stream. Um, oh, and Sheena and Roy both said hi, Harry. So um, I'll let you know if Harry comes in on the stream. Um, oh, okay. So when you met Sheena, you hadn't met Sheena before, obviously. No. 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 Okay. Ah, interesting thought. I I have um, long had the belief that um, the more you're involved in paranormal as such the more your mind tends to, well, you change anyway, because you're interested in it and you're focused yeah. on it. And um, I think it, it alters you inside because you become more of a person seeking answers to questions. Yeah, that's yeah. true, yeah. And rather than it- You're alert, aren't you, as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, it becomes less, You, I've noticed, Holly, you've, your fear factor has dropped. Mm -hmm. and with that i i suspect that that is is the change that yeah you're able to focus a little bit more mm. um because was of that I, I don't know but was i uh when i first started was i a bit more oh hi we can't see hi. Oh, no, hi. <laughs> Got, was you a bit more what holly sorry was i a bit more uh not confident yes yes yeah Every, everyone's the same though holly it's not it's, yeah. it's not unusual it's not yeah unusual. yeah yeah and uh, and to be fair to sheena um she has said this um many times she doesn't like being uh tagged as a medium i think more of a, a person that senses things around her um yeah. and to be, to be fair sheena has always said that she's never said that she's a medium so I, I will backtrack on that. Sorry, Sheena. Um, so, yeah, so I apologise as well, Sheena. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sheena. Can I ask um, Sheena, even though she, she doesn't like to be classed as a medium, if she's still on, what's yes. the difference between a psychic and a medium? Right. Does one okay. see into the future? One just senses what spirits are around? Yes. All right, I'll let you know when she comes back because she's, she's typing in it. <laughs> but yeah, no problems. Harry, I'll ask you the question. Um, you've been, you've also been interested in paranormal for quite a number of years, way before you had the King's Head. Mm -hmm. What is it you seek? What drives you? What, what we, what are you looking for? Um, I think it's the thrill and the, the getting scared a little bit. To be honest with you, um, but obviously since having the pub. Especially when I was on Most Haunted, there was a lot of hype behind what I was saying in terms of I was faking things and I, I was playing up towards the camera and the mm. things that had happened to me it was just because of the actual the, the programming I was saying um, 
what they asked me to really so uh, obviously there's loads of skeptics out there so with all the cameras getting fitted now i'm hoping to show things that people can't actually say it's fake really because we've got cameras yeah. everywhere so it's like harry you, you're gonna have proof now aren't you yeah. with all yeah. the cameras you, i mean we've already caught quite a bit of stuff already you know yeah so it, the, the amazing thing is now we can actually debunk every situation so um the shadow figure that we caught a couple of weeks ago we were able to go three four different camera angles to show there was no other way that the shadow could have been created so that's right yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so that, that's good you know, so... <laughs> yeah so so as i say it's, it's good that we're gonna prove you know especially nobody's going to be there to do anything you know, it's all being done on its own without anybody actually being in the, the building. Yeah. It's going to find and pick things up for us. Yeah. I think it's more creepy when we are using it. Yeah. <laughs> I just had to go and uh, close the door because I was getting feedback loop yeah, between yeah, us. Yeah, I could hear Harry. So I just shut the door to between us. Yeah, the TV thing. Yeah, it's TV. I, I see as a little bit of fun, but the trouble is that you are um, you're definitely having to work on their script. And most haunted is uh, the the first thing people will fall back to. They all work on a script, and there's there's other programs I've done even recently, and it is you're following a routine. Uh, and the difference is here that everything that goes on is recorded 24-7 real time uh, none of it's scripted it's whatever happens happens and to be fair sometimes it's going to be a lot of times when nothing happens but we've all we've all been there we've all faced that yeah well that's it Mike most haunted have got to keep the audience occupied yeah, and, and yeah. tuned in yeah. so if nothing happens they're just going to switch off but like with them it, it's it's a program they're not actually live while they're doing it are they yeah. it's only they've only had the odd live program. it's for entertainment yeah it's, it's for entertainment yeah, yeah. and Whereas to be to be fair we we all have a go at most sorted but it they have generated a lot of people's interest or sparked yeah, a lot of definitely. people's interest in the subject so i'll give them that little bit of credit once upon a time they were the only ones absolutely yeah mm. but i mean harry has always said this is this has got the different potential of that there's no producers hanging over our heads directing no. how things are going to be. No. This, this is the real world of it. Which so if you is, trip up and fall over on our face, it's going to be all on camera. <laughs> we've got live. <laughs> or, or even if you sing on camera as well, that will be live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll never forget that now. No, no, I know. I don't mind. I don't care. I did it voluntarily. you going to do us a little tune now? No, yeah. No. <laughs> No, Come no, on. No, 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 not live. <laughs> I, 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 have not I, I haven't done my singing warm up practice. So <laughs> like, no, no every, I think everyone should learn a little uh, song to sing, and I've done mine. I was the first performer. Yeah. So. <laughs> Get practicing, you lot. I think Harry's done his, haven't you? Cat a yeah. cake, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> Harry's done his. <laughs> okay. um, it's all <laughs> I'll just come in back with what um, Sheena has put. There are psychic mediums and spiritual mediums. Right. Spiritual is more of a religion to some. Psychic can be used for PK or psychokinesis. Yeah, good, good explanation, I agree. Um, there is an experiment that um, I thought of only earlier on today. I haven't even mentioned this to Harry yet. I remember back in the 70s when Yuri Geller was uh, in his height and there was an awful lot of interest in um psychics and psychokinesis telekinesis and i remember a story that they were monitoring um monks that were deep into meditation and they were monitoring brain waves so they were, they were watching how a monk could lower his brain wave activity through meditation but i seem to remember in the background and i could be wrong on this about a monk that could lower his body temperature by mm -hmm. meditation or activation and it suddenly comes to me this afternoon that we've now got the thermal cameras and i've done the experiment of lying on the bed in room six and my temperature 
stayed etched onto the bed for some time. So we and could I, lower his body temperature. Yes, yes. Be all right in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, they would put a, a attach an electronic thermometer and modi um, monitor body temperature, and I just um, wonder if if anyone is still interested in that subject or had any theories about it, and even wanted to test themselves, is to come and be part as a as a test, be a guinea pig and sit or stand. How's your body temperature? It must be. Uh -huh. I'm only reporting the story. I don't know how it's done. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I would love to see what could happen. Seems there. strange. Yes. I think you should try it again, Paul. Do what? Sorry. Get on the bed and try and lower your body yeah. temperature. <laughs> <laughs> that one, no, the experiment was I wanted to see uh, yeah. the heat signature and how it was left. How um, long did it take to actually uh, go, you know, after when you got off the bed? um i think at least a good five minutes yeah good five minutes so so it just proves how much body heat we radiate yeah and, and what i what i did there it's all it was all known science behind it that my mm. my body heat was being transferred into the material on the bed mm. i just sort of my mind went back to the 70s when all this oh there he is he's, he's put the thermal on that i tried to actually yeah. broadcast it harry but Whenever I try to bring it in on the stream, the camera froze. Right. But, uh, uh, yeah, there's me in the background. I'll yeah. wave my arm. Oh, yeah. there you go. That's my arm yeah, waving. Yeah. So my arm up in midair there, uh, that's my hand being warm has been shown as white. So yeah. that is what the machine is capable of, what the camera is capable of. And the different colours you can see on the right-hand side is a scale. So white being the hottest, purple and blue being cold. And that's dotted around the room. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good deal to experiment. But again, as as working in real time, we've all, I'm sure we've all, if I personally have had a, a cold spot experience. Um, so I would, you know, love to to be able to capture something like that, or at least record. So in the it. corner of that that Harry's showing now, you can see thirty one point two. Is that the temperature going up and down? But that's yes. the temperature here. Oh, that's the temperature. That's yeah. the highest temperature in the room. Oh, so right, I'm, okay. I'm, gu I'm guessing that'd be Paul's body temperature. That'd be correct, Paul, do you think? I, I think so, yeah. I think it's showing uh, a range max to min, min throughout the room. Right. I think that's what it is, yeah. Because I've noticed those figures go up and down. So it's giving a, a gradient scale of between maximum and minimum of what it's sensing right. around the room. But again, it adds such a new and different potential. So... Uh, mm. Yeah, if anyone, I, I would love it if someone would want to come in and try that as an experiment. Um, let's just put that camera up. Oh, yeah, there you are. Harry's pointing his camera at the monitor in the uh, in the office there. Uh, yeah, there's my arm moving around. But, yeah, good piece of kit. Very good piece yeah. of kit. Yeah, let's just go back to all of us there. Yeah. So, Harry, I believe you caught... Um something to do with the shower handle moving in room five was it door yeah yeah as you know I, every morning i come downstairs and have a cup of coffee and me frosties and watch all the footage from the night before uh, i was a little bit late down this morning because i was up quite late last night so uh, about 8 20 i think it was paul wasn't it um yeah so you showed me yeah yeah you, you, you can hear cars outside it picks up everything but <clears throat> this was Definitely in the bathroom or in that room, the um, sound yeah. like a handle of the door um, rattling. Uh, I then looked on the corridor door, but I couldn't in and the corridor camera, but I couldn't see the the door handle rattling. But we think we kind of recreated the sound from the bathroom, didn't we, Paul? So yeah, well, I, I went up in the bathroom because I was equally as curious, and because we've obviously got two way communication and video that I, I went around touching everything in the room to see if I could recreate the sound. And one thing is obvious that, to me anyway, and to Harry, it wasn't actually in that room. It was almost certainly the bathroom because yeah. the sound wasn't crisp. It was dulled slightly. There seemed to be a lot of things going on with that bathroom because we've heard the, the sounds of that woman coming out of there. Yes. You know, a couple of times. The board said it was a portal sound. Yeah. And also, yeah. at one point when we were filming, it could be dust, it could be orbs, but there was a lot of shooting out from there. 
Yes. You know what I mean? So whether that is, as uh, Mal said, some kind of a portal in that mm -hmm. room uh, for things to come in and out, you don't we'll know. Just... We've lost Harry. He's coming and going. I think he's back there again. Yeah, he's back with us. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> he, he, he just messes with technology, and this is what happens. You see. <laughs> I keep telling him, but um, the answer to your question, Roy, is yes, the thermal imaging camera, I can log into the camera and change it. There are about 10 different ways of looking at the color temperature, and one of them is grayscale, black and white. So, yeah, there's, um, there's unseen different ways I will show you the next time you come along Roy the different settings um, I did experiment with one actually I, I set it to an orange setting because I wanted to see what the effect was I left it like that for a couple of days and one of the things I noticed that there is obviously an outside window in the room in the afternoon when the sunlight shone in um, you lost half of the image from the room because the color temperature changed but it blanked out half the room where the sunlight hit one side of the room and i found that the the setting we've got at the moment the rainbow colors tends to give um a better view better view for our eyes to look at the color gradients but so yeah you, the answer, answer to the question is yes black and white if you just had it on black and white then paul yes uh, and there was like something that was showing up in the room what would that color would that come up as it would just be a version somewhere between gray, uh, between black and white. So it's mostly gray. The image would show up as mostly gray. Right. Okay. And because our eyes work in the color spectrum, it's more noticeable for us to actually notice anything, movement or anything like that in the diff in different colors. I think rather than grayscale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I will um, certainly turn it on to grayscale sometime and um, give it a try. Are you eating something, Harry? No, I've got Mo Salah with me, the little present of Harry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> there he is. Yeah, you do look like him, Harry. Striking resemblance. Striking resemblance. I, I'm, I'm going to get a perm for next week. <laughs> so. The only thing is, we didn't know what who you support. So my husband said, if he supports Everton, you've had it. <laughs> Most definitely. No, I support Liverpool and I'm very happy today as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just uh, no, sorry. Just in regards to room five again, when Paul went up there before, I was trying to rec um, get the the same noises that we captured before. We heard a woman's voice also as well, didn't we, Paul? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, uh, okay. Um, and we caught it on the camera again. Um, oh, right. But was it a bit more clearer? Mm, it was just short and sweet again, wasn't it, Paul? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But then the other thing, I, can't, I think I said before, but the other thing was that when I came back down to the office and we were looking at the recordings again of me rattling things around the room, yeah. and I think I'm in the room actually talking to Harry on my phone and there's a moment of silence, there's a thump in the room that I didn't actually hear in real time. And if I had noticed it, obviously I would have spoken out and it would have got recorded, but it was only on the recording that it came yeah. through. Figure that one out. I haven't got my head around that one yet. <laughs> That's, yeah, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot going on in that room five at the moment. Yeah, I love that room. Yeah. Um, the, the answer to Sheen. I initially thought, Sheena, it was a call of my name, but it was either it was something short like Paul, but it could have been Hey or something like that. It was quite softly spoken, distinct and clear, but softly spoken. What, the woman's voice? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's got so, a Biana then. <laughs> so it, I will have to have a listen back to it and make a determination at the moment. Just just sort of say it's a female voice, but it's either something like hey or hi or Paul or something like that. Nice. So, yeah, that's the answer to that bit. Yes, you've, you've given him the most sal salad doll and he went and had his hair cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like him. <laughs> he can't <laughs> keep it now. <laughs> Thanks, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Harry, I, just to tell everyone, how much time do you have to spend looking through all the footage? Um. Approximately about an hour and a half every morning, I'd, I'd say. But even then, I'm not really going for uh, enough, thorough enough, really, with it to capture everything. Um, 
obviously there's there's loads of rumors of that nothing spiked in the night, but I always scan over it as well just in case the cameras haven't picked anything up yet. Um, but yeah, about an hour and a half. But I think in the long run, I wouldn't mind an individual on every camera looking at the footage from the night before. Uh, therefore, I can guarantee that if there's something we've missed, then it, it won't be the case. So um, obviously, there's a roughly about well 24 hours of footage to look look through. And Is the there moment, any way you could be fed through to like us? Or... Yeah. Yeah, well, I think I discussed that with you guys, didn't I? Um, I wouldn't mind just the help and hand with the footage because it's yeah, it, it's like obviously the the restaurant side it spikes a lot, the cellar um, spikes a lot, um, especially at the moment there's a cobweb hang, hanging over one of the yeah. actual <laughs> cameras, so it's it looks like there's uh, there's activity going on all the time. Yeah, uh, and we've noticed now that it's it's spiking with noises as well, so. Which is really cool. Um, there's some weird noises in the cellar again last night, but th as Paul said, there's a lot of noise going on there and interference, so it's it's yeah. got to be very significant for it to be able to, for me to say it's something in there. But the, the dust orbs alone, you could sit there all night and watch the dust orbs because, as you see, in the size of football, some of them, but uh, you've always got to write them off most of the time. We need to speak to uh, Steve about the orbs because he'll yes. tell us what's definitely an orb and what isn't yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll have to show him some of the footage yeah i i think likes of um the restaurant and a couple of other areas i need probably to do some more masking because i think it's like car lights and headlights yeah. and things like that that are mm -hmm. giving us false triggers so get there are Steve so on here yeah yeah we'll get steve on there definitely yes well i think he's just plucking up courage to to um get on camera and... him on live Sorry, <laughs> confront him. Yes, him on yes. Live. yes. So, oh, I have. I have invited him. I, I think he's just been practicing doing his makeup, so he just looked perfect. <laughs> so, do you, do you think, um, Harry? Do you think at the moment the most active active rooms are sort of five, six, uh, the throne room? Um, because sometimes one's not too bad, but two and three. I don't know. We don't really go in there that much, do we? That's more. No, um, I said room two was the first one I had activity in before I even bought the building. There's knocks on the right. door uh, when there was, well, you can hear anyone walking down the corridor, so there was no one I could write that off. There was definitely a big knock on the door. Um, but I think we we always assume that we, it's room six is the most active. Yeah, yeah. But as you know now, room five is... Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on in room five. Voices, I said, uh, even through spirit board, saying there's a portal in the toilet, which seems to make sense. So, can I ask whether do you think, or Paul, since we've because we've not really used a board much uh, in the past, do you think since we've been going into like room five and and that with the board, it's pulling through more spirits? or you know making more spirit activity or you know what generating a bit more with using the board i am um, it's 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 difficult to determine really because i think it it, it it seems a lot more active we seem to be getting more on camera recently but the place has been in lockdown with no electric or anything yeah. for so long uh, obviously we're back open tomorrow so whether the energy of the of the building and customers coming in may make a big difference, um, or as you said, then the, the spirit board of recent might have increased the activity. It's, I think this week will tell really with yeah yeah cust customers coming in and the energy that's going to be surrounding the place and all the staffing and the uh, the sh you know the kitchens being operated again, and again you know um, electric being used in the building all the time yeah. you yeah. know. Will that have an impact on what's going on? I, I don't know. Time will tell now, really. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think the whole thing of the lockdown has played a really big difference. In, not just here, but it's almost like, well, any everywhere has been shut down and it's brought everyone's levels of consciousness down and down and down. And it's like the world has been shut off for a while. And mm -hmm. there could seriously be like a global connection to that, that, you know, the, the whole 
the whole feeling of everything has been really quietened down as as yeah. we know here in the pub and now we're in in a position of energy levels are being elevated again um the chef's been very busy in the kitchen for the last few days hasn't he and uh, i i you know all these little things i think are going to add together and when it does open when the pub opens visitors guests and come in yeah it's all going to change i think yeah i think the one thing with the spirit boards made me recognize is that um not many of the spirits in here like me there's only billy who likes me earlier so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of people oh. say they don't like you. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Does um, <laughs> what what does Jade think about it all, Harry? Because she she's never particularly joined in with anything. Not that we've ever told her not to. But um, obviously, when we first took over the building, she wouldn't leave me side ever, and she still feels uncomfortable in there. Just not so bad in the flat, even though. Things that happen in the um, there's knocks and bangs which we ch choose to ignore a lot of the time now, um, but she, she knows these things here. We both experienced quite a lot at the start uh, when when we used to stay over, um, but now she, it just goes over her head. Really, she you know I think the most annoying thing for her is me coming downstairs and leaving her for two hours every morning. <laughs> With your frosties. With me frosties, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, she's she's not that she's not really that bothered to be honest with you. But um, she she knows obviously the place is active. Mm. Um, yeah. But at one time we used to stay in the hotel before I managed to get into the flat, and it was I I'm, I was relatively new to the building at the time anyway, so it really did play up at the time and. I, I kind of wish I would have had the cameras installed and because it was the most active the place has ever been for me. Um, but again, it's when you, the building's got a bit of big change in the, in it. So mm. it's like redecorating, I suppose, someone new coming in. I, I guess it's going to play up a little bit. Makes you wonder whether, I know it sounds daft, whether the spirits and the spirit energy knows that when a person is scared, you know what mm. I mean? It makes you wonder, doesn't it, whether they'll do more if they know that you're scared. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, I, I was never scared. I've never been scared. Only a very odd occasion in here. Um, the covers getting wrapped around me at night time. In that particular, when I stayed in the room that uh, one of our residents stays in now, um, there used to be knocks and bangs and sound like brawls were going on in in certain rooms, which I'd have to go and check out, and it didn't really scare me. Um, I think because I generally have a lot of energy about me anyway. Yeah. Um, you, you've seen how someone coming in with a negative energy who's not really interested in it has a, a draining effect on what goes on well, in the yeah. night sometimes. So, um, yeah, no, I, I don't think I've been scared in here as such. I, I feel, I've always felt pretty calm in here. It's a, it's a, although it's a really haunted place, it's not a scary um, no, place to be not really. Any bad energy. Really. No. Does Jade know you have a uh, ghostly hate campaign? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't Not think I've discussed that with her really. So, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think so. No, I don't think she knows. Yeah, I, I probably have discussed. I mean, when we've caught footage in the night, um, the black shadow figure, the lights turning on, the canister falling mm. over last week. Um, Jade obviously pregnant at the moment, so she's she's going to bed relatively early. So I'll, I'll wake her up and go, "Look what I've caught!" I'm all, <laughs> all, all all happy with myself, and um, yeah, she's she's not that amused with it all. To be fair, no, it's, <laughs> no, it's really it's a big buzz though when you do capture something, though, isn't it? On camera, it's yeah. Real... I, I, I've spent a lot of money on the cameras with the thought of because of all the stuff that I've experienced over the past ten years. Um, I was so happy that within the first five days, we caught poltergeist activity, shadow figures, um, and again, poltergeist activity would turn the lights on and off, yeah. voices, and that's, but that's within the five, in the first five days. So, you know, there's, there's definitely going to be more things that are going to happen in the building. Um, yeah. But, you know, even with the cameras set up, uh, 20 plus cameras, there's still your sceptics out there who are going to think I'm trying to set things up because... 
obviously I was amazed in the first five days and how much things we caught, but mm. it, from an outside point of view, people might think, well, it seems a little bit far-fetched that, but there's nowhere else that I know of that I've done what I've done with the cameras running 24 hours no, in, a ha- in a haunted building. So, you know, I, I think, you know, there's going to be a lot more to come and we can hopefully show the world what it, the King's Head's all about, really. So that's yeah. the plan. Mm-hmm. And, and de- definitely, there's no point in setting things up, is there? It's, we're seeking something, and there's only one way to find it, and that's to be honest. And the, the cameras are the part of it that will, will play out a big part in that. Exactly. Um, and with Paul's technology and his experiments, anyway, um, even if I had a silly moment and tried to like, conjure something up, Paul would kill me. Mm-hmm. Because I know that's not, <laughs> that he's, he's not about that, and I, I respect him. I, well, respect myself first of all for not trying to do it because I'm trying to bring some like proof to to the paranormal. But it, it only it, it disrespect Paul, and I, I, obviously I've got a lot of admiration for him as well. So you felt uh, weird the other night, Harry. Um, mm-hmm. Do you feel better now? Yeah, I felt fine. Um, as you know, it, it, I'm not. Obviously, I can go into a room and feel a change, and, and make. I, I'm aware when it feels a little bit more eerie and sinister, or there's something not right in there. But um, the other night, I, I had headaches. I felt sick. Um, maybe obviously because I'm comfortable with you guys. I, I t- I'll tell you what I feel now. I might, it might have happened to me in the past when I've been to other destinations, but. I think we can all agree that that night felt it felt different from normal. I think we yes. compared it to um, Plaz Tag a little bit in the ways you used to feel it. Eh? Dark, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. it was, yeah, it's like a bit of a dark energy around the place. You yeah, said you felt angry, didn't you? Yeah, there was a part in room six where I felt quite aggressive, and it and only lasted for a couple of minutes, really. But um, yeah, it's it started in room five, and. I don't know, maybe with the messages we're getting through on Spirit Board and it might have just been embedded in my mind or something that something didn't feel quite right in the fact that we were bringing, well, demons through on the Spirit Board. I've never Your experienced that. Satan, apparently. Yeah, 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 <laughs> apparently. So um, it, it, things like that don't bother me, but I, I can't ignore the feelings I had that night. I, I did feel um, different to... As, as I explained to you, the only time I felt like that before was in Drake Low Tunnels in a certain part of it where yeah, I felt yeah. really sad and upset. And the medium we had at the time told me it was a part of the building where they used to tell families that the children or um, mother or father had passed away. Mm. And it, there seemed to be a really negative, um, sad energy in that part of the yeah. room, which I, I, I picked up on. So obviously I, I can tune into that but um maybe i'm just like you holly not not to your extreme recently but um maybe i'm getting a bit more in tune with what's going on yeah um, yeah because what you brought up that night was unbelievable really uh what what did i bring up now Quite so you, yeah. yeah you were kind of getting flashbacks weren't you of what happened to yeah Anna and um how she died and you think the gas canister falling over was anna Kicking, the, get, kicking yeah. it over and get, trying to get away from uh, L. So yeah, it, it kind of makes sense. So it's um, when we were coming home in the car, she she was quite upset because she had a feeling. Was it Anna didn't want us yeah. to go? She was mm. in the car. It was really weird. She was like, kind of like, "Why are you going? You can't go. Why not mm-hmm. finish?" Yeah, but I mean, I know I came in late, but the fact that you go into room five and get pains in your stomach and stuff like that, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, 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 I mean, it's like my connection with Billy here. I feel, even though I don't know what he looks like or I don't know where he is most of the time, it's, you feel an attachment to him because of the messages that come through. He looks at me as a father figure because I have yeah. my own children as well. And so the fact that, what he potentially have gone through uh, with a horrible person like hell it's it's heartbreaking really if, if it is true uh, mm. as, as you know no ch- child should go through things like that so Earl Spencer who's one of the spirits that inhabit this place he's um, 
he's one horrible, wicked, nasty quite guy. Quite domineering, he dominates everybody. Yeah. But he's yeah. just like the one person he can't. But, you know, everyone mm -hmm. seems, you know, all the spirits we seem to get in touch with or come through are, you know, frightened of him or scared yeah. of him, aren't they? You see, I'm, I'm, I kind of laugh the thing off at the moment because every time he comes through on Spirit Board, it's, he's going to attack me, tell Harry to be careful, he's going to do this to me, he's going to do that to me. And I laugh it off, but I won't yeah. be laughing if something actually happens to me, will I? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Same it's not with a... Anna, she doesn't like you. No, I know, but that's men in general, So, but she does like Paul, so that's not saying much for Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was just going to say that a little bit of context that... Um, the name Earl Spencer is not something that's just come through on the spirit board. I actually recorded uh, an EVP probably, probably I'll say about four or five years ago, maybe something, something like that, in room two. And um, it was actually Mandy that was doing a call out and I was recording. And we didn't, we heard noises in the bathroom that night. And I think Mandy was saying something like, okay, we can hear you, we acknowledge you, can you come forward? And the, on the recording was captured a voice that said, okay, curious, Earl Spencer, meaning his yeah. name. Yeah. Not Earl as a title, Earl as a first name. Yeah, at first so, I thought it was a title, but yes, mm. as you're saying, it's just his actual name, Earl. Because yeah. he's too young to be an Earl anyway. Mm. He's like 40s, mm. late 40s. Mm. I don't know whether there's any... Uh, historical connection with anyone with that name. I haven't found anything, but uh, then again, a lot of things get lost over over time anyway. But yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a name that's not just come through from Spirit Board. No, it's come through before. Yeah, it wasn't the Spirit Board. It was literally picked up on your recording, wasn't it? Your recording. Yeah. 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 That's right. And I'll just, just a couple of comments. Sheena's come through a couple of times. She says, I think you're right, Harry. When a place gets busy, it can produce more activity sometimes not necessarily to do with people's energy, more to do with the disturbance. Interesting thought pattern. Um, and then Sheen has asked me, which way do you believe is the west, best way to conduct an investigation? First of all is, I would say, is to be a little open-minded and skeptical, um, but in particular in my case, is use something that would record whatever goes on in a room rather than Make note of personal experiences, but the camera system has changed it now, um, such as recently, if, if people start having different feelings, sensations, whether they feel angry, happy, hot, cold, the more people speak out and say these things, it's all recordable events. So I rely particularly on things happening through technology. Um, and recordable technology. So that that's my modus operandi. Um, but I, whenever I go into any room in any location or any other building, is first to be aware that uh, buildings make noises. So uh, the first is to be aware, sensibly aware, um, investigations. But especially old buildings. Especially old buildings. Um, so yeah, it's, it's results through technology is, is my is my favourite. I don't mind being around um, when people are using spirit boards. They're not something that I use, but I don't mind being around making observations and listening to see if anything coincides, corresponds with anything that we've had uh, uh, in the past over the years. And do, do, do. Yeah, she was saying that um, just while you were talking, Harry, um, lots of interference came over just before you finished talking sounded like annoyed voices anyone else hear that um, so has anyone out there has heard anything unusual I did hear crackly noises as you were talking I didn't hear anything uh, crackly sounds I didn't hear anything yeah. like a voice but if anyone else heard anything not please like you us. Harry annoying spirits <laughs> I know I'm awful I like it. <laughs> Yeah, I've got to admit, my, my earphones are really crappy at the moment. It's only happened in the last, like, five, ten minutes, so... Um, yeah, there is... There is yeah, you're very yeah. crackly. There is crackling coming through, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. Um, Roy's asking, is there any... Oh, he's, uh, Harry's just disappeared offline, so he might be doing something at his phone. Um, any replicated phenomena? 
replication in that occasionally, and it's not every single time, but occasionally um, recording. Okay. It was, it was your battery going? Yeah, Okay. Harry's left us because his battery's just okay. uh, died on him, so uh, we'd say bye bye, Harry. Um, and hearing similar, sometimes responses through uh, machines. Um, I use uh, a crystal combination to generate white noise, and this is, I can turn these machines on live in a room. And sometimes it's just responses and to, to specific questions or just something we're talking about. And there might be a burst of energy as if there's been an interference um, in the machine. So I think sometimes as well, Paul, when when we're talking between ourselves or having a bit of a laugh sometimes, you'll something will come through, it'll pick something up, won't it? Yeah, yes. It's as though like you're ignoring it and it wants you to listen to it or you know, it just picks things up sometimes. Yeah. Well, many years when I, many years ago when I first started coming here and friend Julie used to come along and i didn't have quite as much nowhere near as much technology and we found that that conversations uh when you said something in particular you could get a particular response yeah just through something you were talking about so yeah i think it's spirits listening and wanting to make a point i guess something like that yeah or you're not listening. Um, yeah sheena says it wasn't crackling but it was something completely different she says a female voice oh so, right Harry's gone now because say his phone has died. Yeah. Uh, Mal says it was like someone touching the microphone. Yeah, that's how I could explain it. Yeah. yeah. I could I could hear crackles and things, but uh, I wasn't quite sure what I was hearing or where it was coming from. Yeah. So it might have been um, battery just sort of wanting to shut the phone down. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But yeah. Um, I try to bring the same technology out when um, when I come here, but then again, I often experiment and bring new things along because I'm always building new bits of gadgetry and testing bits of stuff. So there are times where things are replicated, um, and we just do our best to, to record things. Yeah, cameras will cameras will change all that because they're running twenty four seven now. Well, that's one good thing, isn't it? it yeah, just captures yeah. everything now. Yeah. 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 Right, guys, we've been talking a long time. Yeah. And I'm sure people are wanting to either get a cup of tea, a cup of cocoa, or a glass of wine <laughs> in the background. <laughs> so if we're all right, we'll wrap things up for now. Yeah. OK. Um, uh, thank you for everyone that's been listening. Thank you, everyone, that's come through and left us messages. Thank you to Harry and Mo Salah. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I will uh, put out a notice when we're going to do another stream. Uh, if anyone, uh, just to remind, if anyone wants to come forward, um, talk to me about their personal experiences. Yes, Steve. How normally, Steve? Yes, Steve. Um, so we'll call it a night, and thank you very much for everyone for being okay. there. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Don't fall.